Hi everyone and welcome back to my take on it with your angelic karma. We're going to go ahead and talk about love tonight. Love and languages, foreign countries, different cultures. That's what the communication is about romance. We're going to listen at these love stories, these most definitely eye-opening topics that many of us can relate to. And the people having some interesting questions. We're going to start with this one first because I, I want to comment on what she's stating because I feel that she would be quite surprised regarding what she's thinking about the United States. And when I hear it, I think about it completely different, completely differently. And I feel that her experience could be um, quite different than what she expect as, a, as an experience. Now, this is what she states. Then we're going to get into the more, the other aspects. We're talking about foreign countries which obviously are always inclusive of different cultures, you know, and we're, uh, and then they're going to talk about other cultures and dating, the um, pros and cons, but people that have experience with it, they're the ones that talk because they're the ones that are talking because obviously other people will say, well, it's no different than dating anyone else, but majority of people date within their own culture and these people that are stating this do also. So we're letting the people that have the experience, they're the ones speaking up. Now, stating about the pros and cons, the, dif the difficulty, the highs, the lows, and how it will be because of those cultural differences. But let let's listen at what she has to say first. This is what the question that is posed is, would you marry, would, would you rather marry a foreigner or someone from the same culture? Now, this is what they're stating. Okay. Now, so they're talking about people from foreign countries. You're in one country. The person is from a different country. You're from your country. They're in theirs like that. Not like the United States, people from different cultures here that are from different countries. No, we're talking about people from foreign countries like that. And this is what she states. Um, she's Serbian. And she lives in Serbia. And she's Serbian. I was generally more open-minded about dating foreigners than a lot of my peers. Since I've been traveling a lot, meeting new cultures and people, at one point I was in, international, it was in an international relationship, which didn't end well, partly due to extreme cultural differences between us. Yeah, because the culture differences are going to be there. It's not as easy as everybody's the same and all that stuff. Is There are going to be culture differences. Because you're talking about different languages, you're talking about um, different traditions. We're not talking about people that hate their culture and you two find one another. It's people that are well within their culture and they're practicing those traditions. They love their culture. They're speaking their language. They're in their country. Their background is different. The tradition is different. The way of romantic relations are different. The way of life is different. And they have their belief system and their values like that. That type of different culture. So she stated there are the extreme culture differences between them. I could see myself only marrying a Serbian. She's Serbian. And that's because it's the only way of ensuring that my child would not be ashamed of who he is. As I want my children to be proud of their background, their history, and their people, much like I am. I couldn't ever see myself marrying a Westerner. Since anti-Serbian propaganda has been present in the Western media for a long time, it still is. She lives in Serbia. She's Serbian. Now, not to mention that many, if not the majority of Westerners, have a very negative view of Serbians. Due to the demonization that's been going on for decades, and I'm sure it will continue for many more decades to come. Marrying someone from the West means that my child will probably be taught to be ashamed of his Serbian origin, not to mention that I could myself be brainwashed to feel the same way, maybe even going as far as making me abandon my culture and everything else connected to it. That's what caused me to share hers because I think differently. I think that you will be welcomed in the United States. I, and you will be most definitely allowed to be within your culture and not brainwashed out of it. I feel that it more so you will be kicked out of the United States. If you come over here talking about you love the United States or pro United States that's when you will be kicked out like that now I feel that you will be welcomed and be able to practice your culture um and it won't draw as much dislike or hate as you think 
I think you're seeing things. I think she's seeing things completely differently like that. So, and, and whatever's on television, I don't know what she's seeing on television. That could be a small portion of people. I feel like the rest of them, anything that isn't pro the United States is welcome. So she might, a lot of people from different countries, that's something that they don't understand about being here. They will be welcome with open arms. We, I'm pretty sure we have a large Serbian community here and they're able to practice their um, culture, their traditions, their holidays, just like everybody else is. And also, I believe that marrying someone from your ethnic group makes it easier in practically everything. Since you share the, share the same culture, speak the same language, and have more or less same traditions. I think international marriages are awesome, and I have many examples of how beautiful it can be. But in my case, over time, I have grown more skeptical, not to mention the fact that I'm not willing to move up to give up my identity or culture or be forced into shame because of my background. My current boyfriend is much like me with that thinking, which is why he is planning to marry me one day and, it, and is extremely proud of who he is. There are exceptions to my attitude, but that's a story for another time. I feel that her experience would be completely different. What do you all think? I don't feel that that, that would be the experience over here. I feel that she'll be allowed to have a culture and... It, 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 and, and more so if she comes and states that I don't like y'all Westerners be more embraced is what I feel that's what I truly feel and there's probably already a Serbian group well developed here and doing quite well a lot of people that are in foreign countries on the outside looking in that thinks the United States hates their culture or country they're, they're incorrect here we have every culture known in the United States. So it, it, it's not that. You'll be able to find you are probably one of the best men here. Now let's move on. We're going to talk about what are the pros and cons of marrying someone from your culture versus someone from a different culture. Well, I did that and they were from a different country. Now, and and even things with you talk about even with her with the way the propaganda was on television about serbia which i have no idea because i don't watch the news but i know that with the, the man that i was married to we had every time there's something about political they start talking about the border and they will be talking about his culture you know and building a wall and all that type of stuff but he didn't <laughs> And I'm of conservative mentality. He didn't think of it as uh, anything against him specifically and take that as, well, they don't like my culture because he knows that a lot of his people are over here and doing quite well and welcome. So in practicing their culture, you know, and not brainwashed out of it, he, I'm going to tell you something. He lived here, me and him have been married for over 20 something years and he doesn't speak English. Not, not good, not like uh, he, not, not like a person would that was born here that's Hispanic. He held on to his culture that I held on to mine like that. So, is so you'll be able to do, and he did quite well. So, you'll do great here like that. Um, there is nothing about assimilation here. And he will watch television and, and news, he watched those types of things. I don't, I don't watch the news. About even when we were in his country, he would, they would watch things. And even when he was in mine living, he would watch things about news and building walls. And he didn't think that had anything to do with him because he was over here. And he knew that things were quite different. That there was a, communi a community of any culture in the world. It was here in the United States. Like that. So don't sit outside the United States and think they hate you or anything like that. I feel that more, the more that you dislike the United States, the more that you're going to be embraced on this territory is the way that I see things. Now, is, is the way that I see it. Now, even though with the pros and cons of marrying someone from a culture that is different than someone versus someone, someone from... What are the pros and cons of marrying someone from your your culture versus someone from a different culture? When you're when you're marrying someone from a different culture, just like I did, you have to make sure that you have the cultural values that are significant. 
morals, beliefs, values, ethics, and a way of life. If you have that similarity, any other relationship problem, because all problems have a relationship, but if you had the morals in common and the values in common and the ethics in common and tra the tradition in common, you will be able to get through those difficulties like that. Just like I stated that because of, he come from a very traditional countries. Country to us, every country outside of the United States is very traditional. So is, and then I'm from a traditional culture, so we mesh with that. It's traditional morals, value, ethics, um, masculine, feminine, and that being paramount. There's a masculine, there's a feminine, all of that. That was his culture. And that's how most countries, the majority of countries are. And with culture and traditions and things like that, and ways of doing things, ways of seeing life and carrying that on and liking it. Just like she stated, she loves her culture. That's why I was stating in a podcast, Americans think that people come over here from different countries because they don't like their own country or culture and that they're running away from it. No, they would love the United States and love to come over here because of money, but they want to have their own culture and backgrounds and traditions. And some of those roles can be very masculine and very feminine. I don't know anything about Serbian culture, but you can look it up and I'm pretty sure it's very masculine and feminine. So, and what keeps them from coming is do, is them thinking that they're going to be brainwashed, just like she stated, out of their culture and not be able to practice their traditions, their holidays and things like that. If they know they can come over here and do that, they would love to come. And I feel that they can, and maybe they need to be known, it needs to be made known that they can, and they're seeing things completely different in the way they are. Like that. Now, so let's see. So marrying someone from, this is what this person states. So, yeah, obviously, marrying someone from a different culture isn't like marrying just anybody and just like any other relationship like that. Because people have different ways of doing things. You know, some cultures, the women, it's just like if you're talking about financial issues in some culture, this is the financial issue. It, it will be about how do we handle financial issues. Some women from certain countries and cultures, okay, this is how we handle it. You go out and work the money because you're the man. You go out and make the money and you bring it here. And then I'll take care of the house with the money that you're giving me to take care of the house is with. That's the culture. And these women are not wanting to give that up. Just because they're wanting to come and live in the United States doesn't mean they want to be a part of whatever it is that you all are calling culture that are in the United States like that. Just like she stated, she doesn't want to be brainwashed out of her culture like that, okay, you know? It, it's those types of things. And she wouldn't be here in the United States. So is is that, so there are differences. This person answered the question, marrying someone from a different culture could be almost as easy as marrying someone from your own culture when you have the same morals, beliefs, and values. Exactly. It can be very hard when you have different ones. Exactly. A different culture can enrich you and it can be a source of joy. Exactly. But even when you admire a certain culture, you can get annoyed by certain habits, which which um, I've seen very clearly, but not necessarily understand because you have an outsider's view. Exactly. For example, there's a lot I like about the Egyptian culture of my husband. Remember, we're asking people that are in the experience, but I just can't stop getting irritated by the way they deal with children's bedtime. Fitz's bedtime is fairly non-existent and kids can go to sleep whenever and, and wherever they want if they want to stay awake until 2 a.m. and play on the street with all the other kids who are awake, it's totally fine. I always make trouble when I'm in Egypt because I'm convinced every early bedtime and a stable sleep-wake cycle is necessary for optimal brain development, and I refuse to let my kids stay awake too long. Now, so... Of course, everybody thinks I'm overreacting. You won't get these kinds of annoyances when you marry someone who has the same culture as you have. If your outlook on life is really different from the culture of your spouse, marriage can be very difficult and the better choice could, would be to met, choose your own kind. You don't need to be a close, closed-minded bigot to think like that. If you are from a guilt culture, you can have a huge problem with honor, shame cultures. Even the culture of honor that's more prevalent in the South. Okay, they're talking about us, the Southern United States, our culture of honor. Okay, don't put, why does bigot in us have to be put out, out, don't, why do Americans, whenever they're talking about cultural differences and things about that, they always have to add the South in it. 
even if the culture of honor that's more prevalent in the south of the u.s could be too much okay let alone middle eastern culture you can adapt you can adapt the food habits and even taste but you can't change your outlook on life unless you wreck part of who you are exactly so the, the culture i wouldn't you marry you marry within your culture is best it's best to marry within your culture but if you're going to marry foreigner you uh, uh, uh you will have a common culture because they're usually traditional now us culture of honor honor in the south like with my ex-husband with our culture difference even though they were traditional masculine feminine roles very patriarch patri patriarch but for their culture what the patriarch means for them and we had this difference here and, and for us you didn't bring um boyfriend and girlfriend in front of your parents you bought somebody that you were engaged with and that's who you bought in front of your parents and family members men didn't bring all types of random women women didn't bring all types of random men in front of their parents that's for me now but for his culture they could bring a girlfriend and i felt that well because there was a very um macho patriarch patriarchal society that that benefits the man because he could do what the hell he wants to do so if, if he it benefits him to bring whatever woman he wants you know in front of his parents obviously he wouldn't bring anything to um you know too against the norm like a girlfriend or something like that but they could they were able to do that i felt that that was a benefit for them as them being eventual when in mind you didn't do that out of respect the man he just couldn't bring anybody you know unless it was a, a real relationship where there was an engagement or something like that but in his because in macho patriarch is a, they could do that is what i'm is what it is so those are cultural differences also but the culture was similar to um our tradition similar in being traditional um to our southern culture so it would be those types of things now somebody this question here is do you prefer dating someone within your own culture or outside of it well pre pre preferring to date with well it would be easier to to um somebody else is going to answer this that has experience if you mean culture then within within meaning generally the same values and beliefs and morals and religion it 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 it, it would be there would be no difference then out, out of your culture because it would be the same a similar culture now or what do you all think that's this is what this person is stating because the culture differences are gonna make or break the relationship because it's it'll be a culture difference and the culture is the beliefs the values the morals the ethics the way of life that's the culture so it, it would be best to be within your own culture with marriage and 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 i could say this that i've been with a different country and, and culture but or the culture is similar like that it is similar is ingrained within the culture because people follow the cultural practices and the traditions because they love their culture and they want, don't want to give it up just the way that they stated. That's just the way that she stated. Now, so, so what do you all think about that? I, I feel that because a lot of people, when they think about dating other cultures or marrying other cultures, they think about the good part of it. Oh, we're going to be, because that is the good part of it. The different language, the different food, the learning different things. But we, what, what the culture, the values, their way of life, what they think, how they maneuver things, how they make decisions, their morals like that. Is though that's the meat of the relationship. It did the differences that make it exciting, the language, the food, and, and celebrating their traditions. That's the easy stuff. But is that when there's a problem and they, they bring their morals and values and their, that's their culture. Your culture is your morals and values and your beliefs. They bring that to the table of how problems and issues are solved and how they see things. So, you know, the, the relationship isn't just about oh we're eating different types of food or we're seeing a different type of clothing or they're celebrating different traditions it's about their well life and what they think about things like that and how they maneuver things and they how they how they um 
how they uh, make decisions, what their morals and values are. So it's best that, that the morals and values and beliefs are similar to yours. And, and, and it's easy, easier than you think. Um, majority of countries outside the United States, majority of them are very traditional, are still very traditional. So it would be easy to find those that have those cultural similarities um, to yours. Somebody said the comp this co that completely depends on the people of the culture exactly and the conservativeness of the culture exactly. You know, if the culture is very strict with dating and isn't particularly tolerant of the boyfriend or the girlfriend's behavior, then you may need to be careful of how the people around you may act. But also it depends on the people. If the parents or family members generally are easygoing people, then that's great. Go ahead. But even with their easygoing and welcoming, they will want somebody that has similar cultures and values and beliefs and traditions that they have. Or not even, not traditions, obviously, but adherence to tradition. You know. Is that. And it's not about getting arrogant and say, well, I help accept people how they are. It's not about you accepting them. It's about you abiding by their culture and being within their culture. That's why it's best to date and marry within your own culture. And that's what the majority of people do anyway. But if you're going to be in a foreign culture, it would be about you making sure that you have the similar beliefs and values and morals. Make sure that they're similar. Cause not about you accepting it. Well, well, if they say, well, in our culture, this is how, th how things are done. Just like I stated with women of certain cultures, the man goes out and work in the United States. I guess the relationships would be the modern people, their relationship. How are we going to do finance? They talk about that together. In other cultures, even in the country I was in, the man goes out and makes the money. That's how we're going to deal with it. And then he's going to bring it home and that's how the bills are going to be paid. Yeah, the woman can work too, but it's still traditionally that's the man's job and his role. So you can't, it's not just about accepting their culture, it's about abiding by it and living by it because you're in a marriage. So it, it goes deeper than acceptance. And then when an issue comes up, how they resolve issues is going to be based on their morals, their values, their beliefs, their ethics. So you want to make sure that it's similar to yours. You know, somebody say I had a I I had a diversity of friends and learned from different cultures and I accept people who they are. Friends is different than being in a deep relationship where you're coexisting and, and working and combining one another's lives. Friends are usually people that you go out and have fun with, not make major life decisions with romantically. So that's different. And she also states, I, I had a diversity of friends and learned from different cultures and I accept people who they are. I dated outside of my race. It's not about accepting people. It's about you having to abide. You're, in the, you're married to the person. It's about working together, but you're dealing with somebody that has different beliefs, values, morals, and traditions. And accepting them, them meaning that you accept, like if you marry somebody from Iran, okay, and if you would accept him how he is, okay, he will expect you to be like this or that, however it is in Iran, okay, like that. That's acceptance. Or are you stating you acknowledge other people's cultures? Acknowledge their cultures? Okay, I acknowledge your culture. That's different. You, it, 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 you in, in marriages, you are assimilating to the extent, it's best to be married within your own culture and dating. But if you're going to do it with, with in a different culture, it would be best to have the same, it's only the same morals and values and beliefs, the um, ethics, things like that are there, it's, it's positive. As long as that's there, it's positive. If there's a similar, if it's similar, yeah. I have a diversity of friends 
and learn from different cultures. And, that, and that's what a lot of people think because I go to school with a lot of different cultures. I eat lunch at the job with a lot of different cultures. So, yeah, I'll be in a relationship. That's different. You're not combining your life with the culture. You're not making major life decisions. You're not raising children with the friends. You're not doing any of that. A friend is somebody that you're having fun with. I dated outside of my race. Well, we're talking about culture, not race. He was a Latino. Okay. That fits somewhat. That fits somewhat within my culture. But I would never date someone who is way too different from my culture or character. Exactly. That's what I was stating. I don't get how some people do it. They have wonderlust. These things never work out. I would never date North Europeans or Middle Easterners. Life is not a fairy tale. Things don't always have good endings of uh, uh, believing in sparks. And a lot of people in the United States, because we have a hodgepodge of different cultures of people in the United States, they look at that as the authenticity of those cultures. Well, th those th people from other countries that have immigrated here, they're not fully how they would be in their own country. Because we have laws here. And, and, and they try to be a little bit more um, kind of what they look at as American life. Not from where the South where I'm from, but like that. So they're not really the way that they, like my ex-husband was authentic to his country. Now somebody that Latino, like she stated, that was born or raised here or that immigrated here, they're going to act and behave different like that. Okay. Then when they're on the, in their own country, just like in the Middle East, if somebody from the Middle East is here, living immigrated or northern european immigrant they're going to be kind of more acting like how going by the rhythm and roll somewhat of this country unless they're with the, the person of their own culture and they're in this country like that for example my ex-husband he would tell me that that if he would have married someone from his own home country that the treatment between that he tried he treated me and how he treated her would be different because she's from his country and that was, she was raised and born born and raised differently. She would have different expectations. He would have different expectations out of her. Understand like that. Okay, understand. Okay, now is those types of things. Just like he would state that. Women from his country that came to live in the United States, with the, even if they came with the men of his country and they came into this country, they have a lot more leeway here because there are laws here in the United States and there's a different way of being towards women in the United States. But in their own country, those women will act different. They will act in accordance to that country. But here they have a little bit more freedom. That's what he would state. Cultures are different. So just like somebody born and raised here, like a Latino, if they're born and raised in the United States, they're different than somebody from that's from originally from a Latin American country. Even though they hold on to their tradition and they live their tradition, their language and their traditions and customs and family values and beliefs and morals and things like that, it's very heavy within the Latin, um, Latino community in the United States. They hold on to that. They hold it because they like it. It's valuable. Is that a, a lot of these men from other cultures and countries, they tone down their behavior here in the United States. Because they have to go to flow a little bit of, of how it is here, but a little bit, unless they're with the women of their country or culture and they're both in the United States, then they will be living within their country or culture. It'll be somewhat toned down like that but not much but it depends so culture difference are, is not about well the fantasy of we're eating different food and it's very colorful and we're dancing and they have traditions and it's fiesta no no -uh, it's not like that it's not like that it's not like that and, and with my ex-husband the thing was that because he likes freedom so much he didn't like the um, how with a, a woman of his culture, because she would be born and raised there in that country. She would be 
um, attending to him is what they call it. Like breakfast, lunch, they're attending to him. Make like, but he likes freedom. He likes to go and come when he pleases. He doesn't like to be closed in or fenced in. So we work well together because I gave that to him. I hired somebody to attend to the both of us like that. It was different culture, but we had the same belief. <laughs> belief more values like that. And, 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 ethics and loyalty and trust and freedom and those types of things. Now, that was different. Understand? So, that's culture. Culture is deeper than, ooh, this is very colorful. They, these people look like they have fun. No, no. Mm -mm. It's deeper than that. Like that. And she's right. So, I would never date Northern Europeans. I don't know why. Or Middle Easterners. I'm saying I don't know why. Life is not a fairy tale. Things don't have good endings of believe, uh, believing in sparse it cannot be there because you will be fighting all the time i come from a latin country and i find it hard to hold my anger around these people it's very unhealthy i'm a very patient person and barely get angry but i can't always act i'm never angry i know a lot of northern europeans wanted to date me and change me but it's my personality so people are not magnets to opposites Opposites don't always attract. It's not that simple. I just used to have an open mind, but well, it's not even about being open mind. It's about being realistic and knowing what you're getting into and knowing what things is going to be about. I think when people say, well, it looks like it's fun because it's colorful and it's going to be fiesta and it's going to be about celebrating tradition. I think they're closed minded because they're not looking at an open minded viewpoint of all that it entails like that. And it has nothing to do with combi beer and and and. and diversity and friends not a romantic relationship does it what does that have to do with it but you can you do learn a lot from one another but the important is the values the tradition the custom the beliefs and the morals if you have that in common that's the that's the i, I would not be in a relationship with that with somebody i didn't have that in common with because you don't want to be teaching somebody um your morals your values your beliefs your ethics okay you want them to have this that already similar to you and then you two will work well together despite the culture differences then it'll be about language food um traditions of each other cultures what is celebrated and those types of things it will be that that that's uh, that's about compatibility the culture difference is incompatibility if you're incompatible with culture is like it's obvious when you're incompatible with somebody you have different culture you're incompatible and it means you you won't work well together because you have different beliefs different morals different values different ethics different ways of maneuvering life so there's an incompatibility due to culture differences somebody asked what is it like to date someone from a different culture than yours well Marrying someone from a different culture feels different, this person states. It feels, well, different from most basic sensory experiences like food, language, divide, to a fundamental difference in psychology and what the culture prioritizes. Exactly. The kind of topics discussed around the dinner table and the values taught to kids. Exactly. It's completely different. Closed-minded people think it's just about, oh, they're having a fiesta. No, and they're celebrating this tradition and thinking that people come over here because they hate their culture and they're trying to run away from it. No, they come over here and they continue it. Do they love it? And, and that's good. That's beautiful. I like that. I like it. Now, with me and my ex-husband... When he was living here in the United States in culture, like, okay, we, obviously, it was majority my culture. Not the beliefs, the values, and the morals, and the ethics, but, like, um, the, for example, where to live and things like that. It was with my way, like that, those types of things. Now is is that, but the rest, the the substance, was the same because we had this similar culture and things like that. Even though he would have preferred, preferred to live in Georgia, I want to live continue to live in Texas. After he visited Georgia, he wanted to live there. I want to continue to live here for a little bit longer, 
So it's those types of things. Now, the contrast throws many aspects of your own culture into sharp relief. For example, I realize how matriarchal my own culture of Chinese really is, at least in terms of consciousness. It's not necessarily that the mother always dominates, though it is often the case. It is that the feminine part of the psyche is much more apparent in the men of my culture than those of my husband's. I can't really describe what or how, only that it is very visceral and different. Yeah, and, and women from other countries, just like us from the South, the feminine masculine always shows up. It always shows up about it because other countries, of uh, uh, the majority of other countries are very traditional. In the southern United States, is very traditional, obviously. And it, it, that's why for, for us, it always shows up like culture of honor. That's the southern United States. And masculine and feminine for other women of other cultures and the United States and, and the South also. That's always going to come up. And we notice these types of things. Now, with the men of my husband's family, India, I sense a constant drive towards challenging goals and a relentless testing of boundaries underlying even the most mundane conversations with the men of my community interactions are much more subtle gentle and communally oriented so she's stating in china the feminine energy is respected more and the feminine energy is more um how does she state it it is more apparent in the men of her culture because the women are more matriarchal in terms of consciousness. So well, yeah, that that's how it is usually. Now, so, because the feminine energy is carrying the energy, the consciousness energy, and the men abide by that. It's just like us for Southern culture also, and the men are quite, still quite masculine, but but still quite understanding and very open. Remember, in my ex-husband culture, it was the same way, even though the men are, like, masculine-like, but the women did carry the consciousness, and they did have their, um, they were leading the culture. Even with, you know, just the way all women do lead the culture. And that's what the consciousness is. Even though the men are masculine, but they are most definitely playing off the woman's energy. Just like with the, um, with it being communally oriented, subtle, and more gentle. Yeah, my ex-husband was also very understanding, very open, very warm, but very, come from a very masculine culture like that. So is... Is those types of things and very com comfortable within that. And the women in that culture, country, are also very comfortable. And, and also that caused our relationship to be very comfortable comfortable because it was similar cultures. Now, so let's see. She also states, with the men of my husband's family in India, I sense a constant drive towards challenging goals and relentless testing of boundaries underlying even the most mundane conversations. With the men of my community, interactions are much more subtle, gentle, and communally oriented. Masculinity in Chinese culture is expressed more covertly through an understated sense of strategy. Exactly, because with the, with the traditional cultures, it's not overt. Um, even though my ex-husband is a very macho culture, it's not having to be overt with it because it's known and it's well in a tree within the culture and you seeing it just like i stated how their culture difference was in, in in ours you don't bring all types of women unless in front of the parents unless there's an engagement but in his you could do that like that i felt that that was that that getting what they want and the strategy of getting it and it being interwoven in the culture like that and that type of macho masculinity that now is is that as opposed to overt and demanding and and all of that so not that type of masculinity but a different type of masculinity express where things are uh, work well in their favor that type of strategy like she's mentioned a sense of strategy yeah so that's why they're cool calm and collected and masculine men are because how their masculinity is strate strategically woven into things where they don't have to be overt and they come across as cool, calm, collected, and open, and warm, even with conversations. 
Now, because they're only going to be um, overt with it, with their masculinity when they don't have it. It is not really a part of their culture. And they're trying to demonstrate something or some type of, um, they're a part of some type of other different type of culture where they can have societal failures due to their like lack of masculinity or recognized masculinity that is strategic and that has a long tradition just like chinese culture does she states i can't okay she talked about the is very visceral and she can't um describe how their individual aspirations are kept to themselves and shared only after the fact that's in her in her culture it's often said that Indian and Chinese culture share many similarities, like a high value on education and family. That's why I stated the culture differences can work in relationships if you have the same beliefs, values, morals, traditions, ethics. It's similar, not the same, but similar. It's often said that Indian and Chinese culture share similarities, like a high value on education and family. Both of some of the world's oldest cultures, that's why I stated well developed cultures so the men are very subtle because they've been in um these positions dominant positions for for millennia okay so is where so they don't have to be overt with it because in society within the culture they're recognized for their masculinity and it could be that um strategic masculinity and they come across as very warm and open and receptive to the feminine energy because they don't have anything to damn prove is basically what i'm stating okay because it's their their masculine is well interwoven into the culture into the tradition of the culture so she's also stating both of some of the world's oldest cultures and so also value tradition exactly i'm finding that this is indeed the case but those values are achieved in vastly different ways with different strengths and weaknesses Around my in-laws, I generally feel welcome, stimulated, and just a wee bit playfully tested. Now, how, yeah, how them both, both of the cultures have the similarity in value, value in education and family, and they're both of the world's oldest cultures, and so they also vary tradition. That's what I was mentioning about the United, about the this, this Southern United States being the um, recognized American is the traditional Southern culture. Traditional American culture is the oldest culture. There's old like that because it's tradition. So is and and she stated about with Indian culture and Chinese culture having similar values, education and family being important, but they're achieved in vastly different ways. But at least the but at least the goal is hit, and that's what makes the cultural differences. Um, interesting because they have the same values, education and family, but they have different ways of achieving it. But the objective is achieving it and its achievement is the objective. So that's quite positive. And that's what keeps, that's what makes cultural differences in romantic relationships. Interesting. You have the same goals, morals and values, but a different way of getting to the same objective and goal more as opposed to fighting about, they have different morals and values. No, that's a different culture. Those are different cultures, different ways of seeing things, incompatibility. Around my in-laws, I generally feel welcome, stimulated, and just a wee bit placefully tested. Now, the stimulation around in-laws, that's very important. The conversation, what is spoken about, because she mentioned what's spoken about around the dinner table, things like that that are discussed. Now, is it in the stimulation from if you're from a different culture and you're speaking with a different culture and you're with your in-laws in that stimulation romantically between you and the romantic partner that stimulation is going to be easily there because remember their shared values morals and beliefs and ethics but there are different cultures about how the approach the way of life because they have different different backgrounds and different traditions so Family stimulation with communication is going to be based on what's the cultural norm regarding how women come across within the culture in laws and how men come across within the culture in laws regarding what is communicated about what is um a cultural normal what could be discussed and how is it discussed okay and by whom 
is that. So sometimes the stimulation can be limited because with some cultures, it's about um, we don't go there. We don't talk about that or we don't talk about it in this way. So you have to. So the stimulation can be limited and you can get in the depths of those conversations between you and your partner. And because you say it share the same cultural values um, where it counts, you know, what, what you don't want to be in a relationship is where you're like. In the United States, some of these relationships about getting people to see their way and how what happened to their people. You don't want to be in a relationship with those types of people. You want to be in a relationship with people that share similar um, values, morals, and beliefs as you in ethics. And it won't be about people seeing your way or, or whoever's way because it's about your morals and your values and your ethics. And your beliefs is that. But interesting stimulation and things like that with conversation is most definitely is very important. Fierce debates are welcome and encouraged. So they have fierce debates that are welcome in the court, encouraged around my native community. So in her community, in Chinese culture, the debates are welcome and encouraged. Well, anything that opens the mind is welcome and encouraged. And a good old fashioned debate usually does that. In some cultures, that's not the case. It could be a little bit more. Um, it could be a little bit more. It, it it could be a little bit. It could be yeah that also, but it could be about the approach and it's Chinese people are usually very smart and Indian people are also, especially with the value of education and, and, and family. So it would be, the debate would be with facts and using a, um, and both of them coming from ancient, ancient traditions and cultures. So they will have a lot to draw upon. So those could be some interesting debates is what I'm getting with this, as opposed to trying to get someone that, feel a certain way about your culture or think that no is more debate about um long-standing traditions that are based on cultures based on morals ethics and values and beliefs so those would be most definitely some interesting topics of conversation i remember but when when i was living in my ex-husband's country for the nine years the only debate we had it wasn't around the kitchen table. It was about religion like that. They're Roman Catholic. So it it was about that. So what, what they were having. So it is, is that those types of things. Now, and obviously asking my opinion and what I thought of it. It, it was, it was, I think it was about Roman Catholic. And it was about marriage because it was very traditional, very family oriented. Something it was about marriage, but it was about um, the Roman Catholic belief in marriage and in the husband's role, in the wife's role, and the Christian belief in marriage, in the husband's wife, in um, role, in the um, wife's role and because my husband within the family is looked at as very noble in the example of example that everybody was like following and aspiring to be like his younger brother with their marriage and things like that so they were having that type of discussion and that type of debate and conversation now so and so she states around fierce debates are welcome and encouraged around my native community a feel I, I feel there's less room for directly express I feel there's less room to directly express one's individuality, but also greater room for a general emotional introspection not possible when everyone is whacking their ideas like dueling swords. Now so with so within the culture in the debates there was a great room for general emotional introspection. But it was, wasn't possible when people were really trying to get their points across regarding culture. 
Well, you have to think about it with Chinese and Indian culture, with both of them being so, like, they lead the world with intelligence. So their debates would be in, in the approach, just like she stated, of, of, of having the same goal, but how to get there and getting there and achieving it. So those debates would be a sight to see or a sight to watch. You know, because we're talking about people that are, like, that do the best here globally is Chinese Asian culture and Indian culture is that so there would be different type of debates because they're they are goal achieving and education is their hallmark in family and tradition and culture is also so obviously they will have some very strong debates because that's the topic that would be the topic of discussion family and education is those like things just like in my ex husband country the topic of conversation was about um, the, the wife and the husband's role in the leadership pattern and continue that tradition and, and things like that. So I feel that with culture differences, it is it could work as long as the fundamentals of the beliefs, the morals, the values are there. Things like that, or, or, or you're going to just be incompatible if you're dealing with something um that's outside of that you know so is language if you look at the lighter side of things it's about the language and the food you can learn a language um i knew spanish before i met this ex-husband i had was in a relationship with somebody else and i learned spanish in that relationship so with food and things like that it would be obviously you if you're the woman you would be learning to cook their food these countries are very traditional so you'll be learning to cook their food and the foods that they like. They'll be eating your food, food traditional for you and the food that you like. So a similarity in all of that is, um, is good. Ryan states, I'm in a relationship with a woman who comes from another country, from Britain to be precise. And I come from another culture that's quite different from her. I did spend my childhood and half of my teenage years in Asia, so I definitely still have my Asian upbringing into now, so I can only speak from my experience. That's what we want, you speaking from experience. So this is the difference he states. Indirect communicators. So he states in Britain, they are indirect communicators. This is definitely a trivial issue, but it gets to our day-to-day -day conversation. I've dealt with many British people and apparently the opposite of Scandinavians, Germans, and some Asians. As it turn out, turns out, the British are not direct communicators. So I get cautious whenever she says, that's not bad. Okay. Chopsticks. Anyone who lives in Australia, Asian countries, or North America generally could, could use chopsticks with ease. Probably because we are exposed to Asian culture enough from immigrants, but not in the UK. We went out. We went on our first date to a Japanese restaurant, and she was blushing red because she couldn't use chopsticks. We had a good laugh, and a, and the date turned out to be how to use chopsticks to throw a date. Politeness. There are a few countries who have exceptional manners of politeness. In my opinion, Canadians, Japanese, and British. But out of those three, the British are just so polite, like ridiculously polite, until it gets to the point where I feel uncomfortable to keep saying no for the 100th time when they offered me a cup of tea. Now, let me tell you something about my husband's culture. It's impolite to say no when somebody offers you something to drink or to eat. Now, obviously, if they're offering you alcohol, you can say, that. You can say no. They wouldn't offer you that. But if, if they offer you something to eat and you say no, that's impolite. Like if you're visiting family or you're visiting friends in the friend's house, they offer you something to drink or something to eat. You said, no, thank you. That's impolite. Is that. That's rude. Now, for us in the South, politeness is up front and center. Yes, we are formal. It's yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. But see, in his country, they say the same thing. Si, senora. So he blended in with my family well and called my mother Miss in her first name. And I just called his suegra. That's mother-in-law. 
was customary there. So we kind of, so it was common for him to say, because of his culture, si senora, like that, okay. Si senora, yes sir, yes ma'am, thank you, please, all of that. Because we came from similar cultures, just different countries. So it meshed in well. And those types of things. So that's the politeness, okay. So Britain, yeah, Britain is very, uh, the politeness. My communication, talking manner is a little bit cold and emotionless, he states. I'm a bit detached and nonchalant to the point that she's finding it hard to gauge how I feel. I don't know how to respond to questions such as, are you excited? Apparently, my facial expression needs to be lined up with how I feel. Otherwise, they would get the wrong idea. Who knows? Okay, so she's not being able to read his, um, the culture differences. She can't read the expression on the face. So she has to ask him is he how he's feeling emotionally. Now, okay, even temper. Okay, my ex-husband was also very even tempered. All the men were even tempered. Like even temper, even though they would joke around a lot though, but they were like even temper. Now, because I felt that they were very confident and comfortable in their masculinity, so they were even tempered. Her parents are more accepting of intercultural relationships. So her parents are more accepting of the intercultural relationships. Traditionally, Asian parents are more conservative and insular when it comes to intercultural relationships. I'm not talking about immigrant parents because generally they will be more open. It took about, yeah, that's what I was stating. The people that live here in the United States that are from different cultures, you can't, you can't say that cultures, that the countries that they come from are the way that these people are that were born here, that are from these different cultures or immigrated here. They're different when they're in their own country. They're different. And they're different when they weren't born and raised here in the United States. Traditionally, Asian parents are more conservative and insular when it comes to intercultural relationships. I'm not talking about immigrant parents because generally they would be more open. Exactly. It took about two months for my parents to accept the fact that I'm not going to be married to a woman from my country. But my parents are very fond of her. So it's all good. So let's see. And I think for my ex-husband with uh, in his family with our marriage. Well, my grandmother was still alive and she like wasn't impressed. <laughs> He, he met my family first before I went out of the country to meet his. Okay, so it was, um, so she, my mother was very open, and I stated this, cause, because people, when he came to our small town, people thought that he was her brother, like that, okay, because her brothers and her sister would come visit, and they thought that, okay, we were in, in the supermarket, the first night we were all there, and a woman came up and she was like, oh, miss. And she said my mother's name. I didn't know your brother was in town. And my mother was like, he is like that. And then she was like, yeah. And she looked at my husband. My mother was like, no, that's not my brother. That's, that's, um, Lissa's husband. Like they call me Lissa. Okay. And it was like, oh, okay. Like that. Okay. They thought it was my mother's brother. So he fit in like that. And we, he fit in with my brothers. They welcome, like open on, very welcome like that. Now my grandmother, she was <laughs> My dad liked him. My grandmother wasn't very impressed. Okay. So, because I, I feel that she thought um, that I don't know why, but I feel that a lot of people think that thought that I would marry somebody white and American. I, my ex-husband thought that. I think that's what my grandmother thought. I don't, and people think that that's what, that's what matches me. I don't know why they think that, but I think that she thought that that was going to be the case like that. So that's what it was, but welcome him still. You know, my aunt was there, my dad's sister. So welcome him still, you know, and accept it most definitely. Now, so getting over that. Now his family, when I went, I feel that for them, I was... Because I was American, that kind of, and none of them had ever come to the United States. Everything they knew about the United States, they got it from television. So, and not very positive. <laughs> I would be so embarrassed when they be watching an American television show. <laughs> so, so I feel that what, what and then some things were positive. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel that what was a plus for them is that my Southern upbringing, 
and my appearance like that. So, because they would state that me and my ex-husband could, could prepare for brothers and sisters. But I feel that we look quite different. And I think, I'm going to say this, I think uh, also what caused them to more accept me is because I think they thought I was intelligent because I was able to go there. You know, I worked for a school. I was the um, director of public relations and international affairs for a school there. And I, I think also my parents, my eyes, I have green eyes, so I think they like that. And then I have reddish hair, so I, I think they like that. And freckles because they would comment on that a lot. So I, I think that's why a lot of why I was accepted. Also, and, and I would be in there cooking southern meals and southern food. And I was very clean like that in, in, in cleaning and, and things like that. I was like bringing a little bit of Southern culture there. So that's why I was at Southern. I was very traditional. And, um, I, and, and I think they like the conservativeness of who I am, uh, the conservative, things like that. So is, but I, I remember that I, I feel that they felt that they had to be behave a certain way in front of me like that. I feel like they felt, I don't know what idea they had, they were thinking, but they, I think that they felt that they had to behave a certain way in front of me like that. Especially my sister-in-law, like, she would make me making sure all the children were like, okay, go wash your hands before eating. I think in doing that because I was there is what my ex was like, thinking that that was the mode of operating and things like that. Okay, it's that. So, uh, the acceptance part from them with me, it was obviously there, and I was obviously not um, a, a woman of their country. So, now, Asian family would keep offering food constantly to show affection, particularly in Chinese culture, offering of the food. Calling elderly by appropriate name. This is the cultural difference, he states. As far as I know, this is a very Asian thing. We... we where we all have specific names for everyone we interact with, especially for in-laws, never call by their actual name like John or Jenny. It would be disrespectful. For us, not saying yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, the people that are older than you is disrespectful. Not opening doors for people that are behind you or holding doors is disrespectful. Uh, things like that. Not saying please and thank you is disrespectful. Cursing, saying bad words and cuss words in your family is you should be disowned is highly disrespectful. So is, and obviously you wouldn't call them their first name, the, the parents or the, but, but even in a, in a, in the other part of American culture, they feel, they like to feel young for some reason, especially when they're losing their youth and they can see it. Is like, and they want to be on that friendly, young, first name basis with people that are th in authority figures, like older people, and that's so disrespectful. That's so disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Like, like my ex husband, he knew not to call my mother by her first name. She's his mother in law. You know, is missing her first name, just like that. Just like within his culture, it was the same thing. And in most cultures in the world, so I think it's just in the United States where it's different. So, and then they can still joke, laugh and joke and things like that, but it is just, it is just the way that it is. It is really important to observe the relationship between the speaker and the audience. Exactly. This may be difficult for non-Asians to accept, but if a person is superior to you, and that's another thing with American culture, they hate that word superiority, even with their own parents. They hate to think that their parents are superior, parents are superior to them. And I don't understand what's the problem with your parents, with think, knowing and accepting that your parents are superior and authority figures. It brings great comfort. It brings great respect. They're superior. They're an authority figure. They gave birth to you. They're your authority. You know, and and I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with them up up north. I just don't. I just don't. So it's really important to observe the relationship between the speaker and the audience. This may be difficult for non Asians to accept. But if a person is superior to you, you should never use the actual name or say you. You can't even say you to them, he stated. I did teach her about this upon meeting my parents for the first time. She felt awkward saying it at first. Now she is used to it. Because they, they want to feel equal to people that they're not equal to. Or they feel that 
they feel that it's meaning that they're less than. No, it's, it's, it's less about them and it's more about the respect that you're showing. It's more about the respect that you're showing to others than about you and you feeling like an equal and all of that. That doesn't mean that you're less equal. It means that you're showing respect. It's that. You know, growing up in a Christian family, I celebrate Christmas but never like how she celebrates Christmas. My family tradition for Christmas is to go to church and her tradition for Christmas is to eat roast dinner, which is one of my favorite about British culture. Exchange presents, secret Santa, take a photo with Santa. If you're a kid, but I never did any of that. So when I told her I never took a picture with Santa, she laughed, felt very sorry. And we immediately went Christmas shopping during Christmas with Santa's photo booth and took a picture there. Okay. But apart from that, everything else is great. If anything, these cultural differences have been uh, ad an adornment to our relationship. Because they most definitely, um, they, they most definitely um, keep the relationship interesting, the differences. But we have to be um, realistic about the, the differences also is what I'm getting with this, um, with cultural differences. Now, with Christmas... It was different for me also, especially the first year I was there in Christmas because it was at 12 o'clock that Christmas Eve. So it was, <laughs> and, and, and for us, we kept, for our culture in the South, Christmas continues the, the 25th, well, the 24th on until January the 1st. And sometimes it, it continued until January the 7th. You still have Christmas, you had to still have your Christmas tree up. So, and that's for us in the South. I don't know how Northerners in the United States, you all have to tell me how you all celebrate Christmas up there. But it was, it continued for us until New Year's Day. And then some, it continued to the 3rd or the 7th of January. And all of that was Christmas. From the 24th of New Year's Day, it continues to the 1st of January. It's Christmas, the Christmas, and up to the 3rd or the 7th of Christmas. With their Christmas, you had, um, you, you, you had, on the 24th, Christmas Eve, at 12, that's the, that day was Christmas. On the 25th, nothing was happening. There was nothing special. All the Christmas presents were open on the 24th. There's nothing special on the 25th. Christmas is officially over. And then you have Los Reyes Magos, the three wise men that come in January and bring gifts also. Like that is what they had. So that was kind of different for me that the, the kids were getting a gift in January because they were going to have the three wise men that came to bring gifts. And the, the actual Christmas was you have to stay up all night. They're having the, 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 the Christmas get together with the family and friends at night at 12. And then everybody stands up at night at, tw at 12 a.m. Christmas morning is 12 o'clock midnight okay, and kissing each other on the cheek and wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. And I cried the first night, the first year I was there and it was Christmas. I cried because I missed the United States so bad. And I was there like, oh, she's crying. I was doing so much crying there. <laughs> every, every, the first three years, all I was doing is crying. You know, is every holiday, I was just, I was just crying. You know, <laughs> Missing you all, you all are a bunch of damn nuts. I miss the South. Is what I mean. I was missing the South. I was like, oh, oh. every time something would happen, I was just home. I was actually homesick. I, I was homesick. Now, so, um, so that's the way. Um, so that's the way that it it was. Until next time, thanks for listening. Bye.